You know, we live to see lives transformed by the power and the name of Jesus Christ. There's a scripture that we'll read later on, but we've heard it before. It says, everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We're living in a world, and when Jesus came to earth, his mission was clear, and he said this, he came to seek and save the lost. And that word lost means those, by the decisions they've made, that have ruined their lives. There's a world out there that's depressed, they're hopeless, full of guilt and shame, Because the truth is, every one of us have made mistakes, done things that we're not proud of. But I got good news for you. God is not here to judge you, to put you down and accuse you. We already got enough of that within ourselves. He's here to forgive you, give you a new start, set you free from the repercussions of the bad choices you made, and give you a brand new beginning. The world needs this message of hope. Aren't we living really in a hopeless world every year over a million people commit suicide that means they've got to the end of their rope and they're saying i just can't live anymore when i look at myself in the mirror i'm so ashamed of who i've become and and i just can't i have more vision about the past than vision about my future when i look at my life all i could see is the mess the hurt the pain the suffering i'm going through i've gone through I guess there's no reason to live. The things that I've used to medicate my pain, like alcohol, drugs, and um, sexual relations out of marriage, all these things are leaving me even more empty. Can someone please give me hope? We as a church are here on earth to shine some light in this dark world. And if you're right now living in a place that says, man, I feel so hopeless. I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. Jesus is waiting for you right now. You've tried everything else. Why not say, not religion, we're not offering you religion, but why not call on Jesus? Say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, give me purpose. Jesus, give me joy. Jesus, fill me with your peace. Today, if you ask, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And for you, I don't know what you need to be saved from. But whatever you're dealing with, Jesus can handle it. And you might say, man, this is my first time here. I don't, I don't know God that much. It doesn't matter if you know God that much. He knows you. And if you'll just take one step in that direction, the, the scripture says this. If you just draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. He's just saying, just take one inch in the right direction and I'll meet you right there in the middle. If you're just willing, say, Jesus, I'll come right now the way I am. Don't fix your life and come to Jesus. Come the way you are and let him start putting things back together. How many know that, we, that God knows what he's doing? He can put it back together and he can make something out of nothing. Say, I don't got much to give. You don't need to give him nothing. He makes something great out of nothing. That's the God that we serve and that's why you know, even right now, this place is almost full and our 11 o'clock serve, people are packed. We are all our campuses. People are coming. Why? They've received hope. They've received salvation. They've received a new beginning. They came here addicted and they're leaving free. They came here depressed and they're leaving with joy and peace. They came here hopeless and they left here with a vision. Come on, that same Jesus that created the heavens and the earth is here available for you today. You personally, he loves you. Let's all stand up. I want to pray before we get into the word. And and today I want to talk to you about getting in position for the mission and some of you and some of us don't know that you're here for a purpose you're not just here to breathe air and just survive you're here to fulfill a mission on earth and when you find that mission you're going to find your fulfillment And, and i think we've gotten to the point even as churches that we've actually preached a wrong mission And no wonder our people are dissatisfied. The mission is not you. The mission is God working through you to help somebody else out. And what I I mean by that is we got to be super careful that we've not turned churches 
into bless me clubs. That I'm coming to be blessed and make that the end to the game. Because if you're here just to be blessed, you got part of it right. But the next part is God blesses you. But the Bible, Jesus said this, it's more blessed to give than to receive. What he's saying is, okay, receive your breakthrough. Receive your healing. Receive your freedom. Receive your restoration. But if you want to go to the next level of blessing, pass it on to somebody else. It, there's a scripture that says that we're more than conquerors. You know, being a conqueror means that you've overcome. Being more than a conqueror is when you finally help someone else overcome. Could it be that we're not living the fulfilled Christian life because we're still self-centered? That means we want to get God's results, but we have the mission of this world. The world is self-centered. Jesus did not come for himself. He came to save lost sinners. We are here on this earth with a mission, and your mission is not you. Your mission is God working through you to touch somebody else's life. How many get that that would be more fulfilling and that's a place of greater happiness and joy? We need to get in position for this mission. First of all, today we're going to talk about just even understanding what the mission is. How can we fulfill a mission and we don't even know what it is? But if we could find out what that mission is, I really believe that the Way World Outreach is a church that's relevant in the, I believe we're in the last days and I really believe that God's going to start a disciple, discipleship revolution here at this church. Come on, throughout the world. Something's happening right now. There's a message that God has given us that churches and the world needs to hear. You know, this week, which is pretty cool, we've been, we've been going to prisons for years. And this year, one of the biggest prisons in the world just gave us an okay to bring TVs into their prisons now we're not bringing tvs into just the chapel they said we want tvs in every dorm that means every single prisoner in cochran prison which is one of the biggest prisons in the world some of the, gr the biggest shot callers are there on Sunday morning and, and the TV we're going to have in there, we're buying the TV, we're putting it up and they're putting it so every single prisoner is going to hear our live Sunday morning services within a month period of time. That's the mission of God. God is looking and he's interested in reaching prisoners that are hurting and broken and lost and depressed and suicidal and they're wondering for purpose. They're looking for purpose. We got it. God is making us our church available and we got a message that people need to hear and it's a simple message it's been in the Bible the whole time we got to get back to the we need to get back to the mission of Jesus how many we need to get back to the mission of Jesus stop trying to just overcome your depression overcome your depression and help somebody else out or else you'll get depressed again do you know why we go in cycles because your cycle is just you You'll never ever be more than a conqueror and finally overcome the thing when you find, this is how you overcome, by getting the victory and spending the rest of your life helping someone else get the victory. Come on, let's give God some praise that we can overcome and help someone else overcome. If it's just you overcoming, you're part of a bless me club. There's no purpose. You don't need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to help you with the mission of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's not to give you Holy Ghost boost bumps. It's to empower you for a purpose to bring a message of deliverance, of freedom, of salvation. People need hope, but they need the power and they need someone that said, I understand. You're my mission. I love you. And we love you guys. And right now we just hit the streets yesterday and, and we have, I don't know how many people out there, but we probably had 500 people. I want to thank everyone. I mean, I want to thank the church. We are preparing. Come on. Some of us went out there. Some of us supported it online here in person. But the truth is we went, we knocked on around 5,000 doors yesterday and people were hearing the good news of Jesus Christ and people were getting saved on the streets and we're preparing for a big event on March 12th. We're inviting the community. I want you to come too. On March 12th at, at our Lincoln Elementary, we'll give you more information on that. We're inviting our community to come out and hear the good news, to be loved, 
to be cared for. We're going to give, we're going to spend around $60,000 on that event. We're going to give away bikes. We're going to give away TVs. We're going to give food. We're going to have, ladies are going to be able to come by and get their nails done, did. And, and we're going to have makeup and makeup makeovers and all kinds of, stuff. it's going to be, a, we're going to fix bikes, give bikes away. We're going to give away some Jordans. It's going to be awesome. And then we're going to give them the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and they're going to be safe. Come on. People are going to join our family and they're going to receive eternal life. We got to get to work. That's what it's all about. Lord, we just thank you. And we ask you, Lord, to help us get in position for the mission. The fact that right now this house, people are here, is that they're hearing your call. It's not always easy to wake up in the morning and come to church. It's a sacrifice at times. But Father, there's a group of people on this earth that you can depend on, that they'll be, be, be willing to say yes to waking up, yes to going on a mission field, yes to going and cleaning a neighborhood, yes to saying yes to a single mom and let her know you're not alone, baby. We're going to help you with your kids. We're going to get some mentors over them and we're going to help you get out of poverty, get you, help you get out of the hood. We want to let you know you are not forgotten. Yes to a homeless person on the street that's strung out. Everybody overlooks them, but you've not overlooked them and there's a church that's ready to go out there and reach them. Yes to the prisoner that gets out of prison. Yes to the person that's going through a divorce and they're saying, I'm broken hearted and then we introduce them to the Lord that heals the broken hearted. Father, we just thank you for a church that's saying yes if you can send anybody send us Jesus we'll go we'll go where everybody else doesn't want to go we're going to get in position mentally spiritually for the mission you've given us in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated now what I'm going to teach you I would even say this would be this would be curriculum that I would teach at a leadership university uh, I, because we're talking about the mission of God. And I think that, that I think every other organization out there goes over their mission and their vision over and over and over. And I think the church can get lost in the mission. And we could think the mission is just going to church. The mission is just to be happy. And I, I understand going to church is part of it, but this is, this is training. It's just kind of like going to school and you think the mission is graduating from a university. The mission isn't graduated from university. The mission is to get prepared for a career. When we come here, we're coming here to be equipped for a purpose. And until we fulfill that purpose, we're going to be empty. And this is a sad thing is, we're going to pass on a faith that's weak. A faith without any responsibility is not a real faith. And what's happening with our children is we introduce our children to church like it's an entertainment, entertainment venue instead of a school of training to fulfill a purpose. So what happens, they spend their whole lives in church and in our homes and they don't have a sense of purpose or a sense of mission because we never put a weight of responsibility on them. So there has to be accountability and there also has to be responsibility. Accountability is that you're actually accountable to someone. This is not a free for all. This is an army. There's no such thing as being a soldier in an army without being subject to some sergeant, some lieutenant, some general. Because we're being trained for battle. We're being trained for war. We were created to fight. We were created to have a challenge. We were created to want to go to war. And many of us are going to war in the wrong realm. You're fighting against your husband. You're fighting against your wife. You're fighting against people. You're created for war, but not that kind of war. And no matter how much you fight and no matter how much you get involved in that battle, you're losing every time. Because that is not the battle that God has called you to fight. He's called you to fight a battle and be a champion for the hurting and the broken and the lost. And if you can find your purpose and start fighting the right battle, you're going to find your, come on, you're going to find your fulfillment. You're going to find your peace. You're going to find your strength. And then you're going to be empowered by the power of God to fulfill his mission. Why do we need the power of God? For his mission. I, I'm talking about this because we've turned, I, I, I'm, like maybe I'm on a soapbox right now, but we've created a whole bunch of weak Christians. 
They're going from church to church, place to place, looking for something. And your something has already been given to you. And until you fulfill your purpose, you're going to keep on searching. There's enough prophetic words that have been spoken over you, whether it's been spoken over you or you know within you, I've been created for something more and you're searching for more, but you're not going to find more in just another word spoken for you. You're going to find more in taking responsibility. Okay. Fight to get in a position for the mission. I'm talking too fast. So what is the mission? In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, we see the mission. Maybe you as a Christian have this scripture memorized. But just because you have this scripture memorized doesn't mean you have it internalized. It could be in your head, but it doesn't mean it's in your heart. We've gotten to the point that we go to church and we think going to church is like watching a movie. After we leave, we ask ourselves, well, what would you think? Well, I love the songs that the worship team sang. That was awesome. The pastor, I give him a B plus. And the other one says, no, I think C plus. But the idea is we're not, yeah, it, we're not here. You don't, the, the soldiers don't ask. They're, they're not judging the commanding officer. They're just there to get an assignment and then go out there with assignment clear that I get instructions. It's time to go out there and do it. So I say, we're an army. You don't go to school to learn. You go to school to learn to do. You don't go to school to learn how to be, to learn about accounting. You learn how to, you go to school to be an accountant. You don't go to school to learn about biology. You go to school to become a nurse or a doctor. You don't go to school to learn law. You go to school to learn law so you can become a lawyer. You don't come to church to know the Bible. You come to church to go learn the Bible, to become a Christian, to become a disciple, to go out there and change the world. Come on, I'm a world changer. Come on, let's see, come on, let's get some praise. I'm a world changer. Let's get excited. Let's start writing this stuff down now. We're going to get this in our system. I'm wearing this shirt, God's presence everywhere, because if we're going to have God's presence everywhere, it's going to be through you. The only Jesus that people will see is the Jesus in you. I'm tired of hearing people, I don't see Jesus. If I saw Jesus, I believe in Jesus. You know what that is? It's an insult to the Christian church. What they say, this is what they say about the church nowadays. Not our church, but churches. This is what they say about churches now, or Christians. They say Christians. This is what they say, they're hypocrites. Hypocrites, you know what? But why are they calling us hypocrites? Because we don't look and talk like our Savior. Jesus said this, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It needs to get to the point that we're so much like Christ that people could, we could actually say, you want to see Jesus? Look at the Jesus in me. Right now, I'm walking in forgiveness and love. You know how I used to be. I would have knocked you out last time you spoke to me that way. Something happened. Jesus has taken over my personality, taken over my language, taken over my habits. I used to be a drunk, but now I'm sober, and now I'm under the influence of Jesus Christ. Can't you see the God in me? You knew I couldn't quit, but so Something came that was more powerful than my self-discipline. It was the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus changed me. You want to see God? Look at the God in me. Look at our marriage. Our marriage is on the rocks. You knew we were in divorce court, but something happened when we came to the house of God. We got some power. We got some love. We got some forgiveness. Not from us. Not from my mama. Not from my daddy, but from Jesus Christ. And what he did for me, he could do for you. You want to see God? Look at God in me me now 
Jesus is now talking to disciples. Who is he talking to? In this portion of scripture. A disciple is just, it's not just, but it's, it's a follower, a personal follower of Jesus Christ. So he's talking to a group. This portion of scripture is not a, a portion of scripture that he spoke to a large crowd of thousands of people. He actually spoke this scripture or said these words in a small group setting. Well, right around 11 disciples. Because one of them betrayed him. So he brings these 11 and he begins to share with them everything I trained you is for this mission. This is after Jesus dies and resurrects from the dead. He shares and reshares the vision and the mission. He goes, I want to make sure that you understand why you're still here on earth. You have an assignment. And I'm going to tell you what the assignment is. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Go out there and make followers of Jesus Christ. That's a big statement. And even if you're here for the first time, don't find this weird because either you're following Jesus or you're following something else, but you are following. The question is, who or what are you following? Because you look like the thing you're following. What he's saying is people are following, but they're following things and they're following people that are destroying their lives, ruining their marriages, ruining their minds, ruining their bodies, ruining their families. He goes, let them know that they can follow me. And if they follow me, they'll have an abundant life. If they follow me, they'll be forgiven. If they follow me, they'll be whole. If they follow me, they'll be free. If they follow me, they'll be born again. If they follow me, they'll have eternal life. If they follow me, they'll have purpose. Let them know. Go out there and make some Jesus followers. Just think about that. If that's the assignment, one day we as a church, we as individuals, because this is not only a uh, a corporate call, it's an individual call at the same time. So corporately, we do this. We make disciples of Jesus Christ. This is not a church that should live off church transfer. What do you mean by that is, I love that God is sending people into the harvest field. That means that some of you came from another church because your church wasn't on mission and God sent you here not to hang out and not to be entertained, but he sent you here to get to work. And God will do that because you were bored. You were going to church and it looked like a little club and we were just sitting in line trying to get a blessing. Please, someone bless me. Someone speak over me. I don't know. I'm confused. And then God says, that's enough of that. That's enough of religion. That's enough of this bless me club. And it's time now to get into, come on, the battlefield. And God brought you here. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But God uses a willing team, a willing person to transform someone else's life. Regular people that say yes to the mission can do extraordinary things. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Help the people learn of me, believe in me, and ob obey my words. Just think about that. God is saying we're here to help people learn about Jesus. But how can we teach people about Jesus if we don't first become Jesus followers? Well, pastor, do we have to go out there and witness? What kind of question is that? You shouldn't be asking, do you have to go witness? 
because idea witnesses should be flowing out of your spirit. Well, what do you mean, pastor? This is what I mean. What you love, you talk about. No one needs to tell you to talk about the boyfriend you love that you just got. Oh my God, he's so cute. Why you keep talking to him? I know, but he's just so cute. He's so perfect. He's just so, he's like my dream. This is my list and he meets it. And your girlfriend's like, I'm sick and tired of you talking about, I know, I just can't help it. Just, he's, 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 on my, he's in my heart. What you love, you talk about. And what you talk about, you duplicate. If you love business, you talk about business. If you love money, you talk about money. If you love drugs, you talk about drugs. If you love lust, you talk about lust. If you love women, you talk about women. If you love gambling, you talk about gambling. If you love violence, you talk about violence. But the thing is, whatever you love, you talk about. No one needs to tell you to talk about what you love. You talk about what you love. If you love fashion, you talk about fashion. If you love cars, you talk about cars. If you love the Rams, you talk about the Rams. And it's okay to love them, but don't love them more than you love God. Don't come on. Don't let another conversation take over your mission. It's great to be a fan, but don't be, make being a fan your mission. It's okay to have a boyfriend, but don't make your boyfriend your God. Some people get saved and then they get a boyfriend and they forget about God. Some people get saved and they were broke and then they get a job, they forget about God. You know what happened to you? You forgot your mission. You forgot where you came from. You forgot the one that saved you and delivered you when nobody else wanted you. There was a God that reached down and he picked you up. He said, come, follow me. Nobody wants you, but I want you. There's other people in that same exact position today. They need someone to go out there and let them know that you haven't been forgotten. There's a God that loves you. And let me tell you my story where I was, but I'm not there anymore because there was a Jesus that I called on that saved me. And the truth is, I am not a follower of my gang. I'm not a follower of my hood. I no longer chase after those skirts and that weed. I follow Jesus Christ. He's the one I live for now. And it's the best life I ever had. We got too many dead Christians. See, because when you're dead, we already know because dead people speak death. When you're dead, all that comes out of your mouth is negativity and complaining and frustration. But when you're full of life, come on, you're full of the Spirit of God, you're full of Jesus, what comes out of your life, come on, what comes out of your mouth is hope. What comes out of your mouth is encouragement. What comes out of your mouth is thanksgiving. What comes out of your mouth is praise. What comes out of your mouth is life. Let's get, come on, let's get on the mission. So help people believe in me. And obey my words. I just, I just want to be clear about this. You cannot produce what you're not. How are you going to produce children that obey God and, when you, and you're disobedient? Well, I'm just hoping that God will intervene. God, God's going to intervene through you. Yeah, I'm going to tell you this. You don't get in a position for the mission. Part of it is being here every Sunday. You go to work every week. Well, every Sunday in church? Yeah, every Sunday in church. Just like, you go, just like you go to work five days a week, you're going to dedicate two hours to God out of the 160 hours you have during the week. How are you going to pass on a consistent faith when we're inconsistent, even in the basic stuff like attendance? We want to graduate in the spirit, but we can't even attend class. Well, I don't feel like it. It's just not valuable to you. There's something more valuable to you. You're on another mission, so this mission bores you. 
But whatever mission that you're on, even though you're excited about it, this mission is what's going to give you eternal life. This mission is what's going to, come on, save your marriage. This mission is what's going to save your kids. This mission is what's going to give you joy. This mission, come on, is what's going to give you power. God wants to empower you for the mission. Don't let worry overcome, anxiety overcome, depression overcome your vision. Amen? amen? You know what amen means if you're here for the first time? It just means I agree with that. So don't freak out like, oh, hey, amen. We do hallelujah churches? What is that? What is holy rollers, huh? <laughs> I just like to explain stuff. Amen just means like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Let that happen in my life. He right, he right, he right. Or you can, instead of amen, you just say he right. Well, I'm not right. The word of God is right. So teach people to obey my words. Baptize them. Now, you know who he's talking to? Us. That means that we should be, this is what we should, we should be bringing, we should be converted, being used to convert people from non-believers to believers and then get them to the point. Are you all in? Yeah, I'm all in. Okay, now your next step is to get baptized in front of everybody. You're going to show you're all in. No more secret life. When you were out there drunk and you were crazy, you were loud and proud of your nuts life. You were nuts. You were crazy. You were losing it. You were angry. They had to call the police on you. Now you're going to be a Christian. You're going to be public about this. You're going to let everybody know I'm dipping in because I'm, I'm just letting everybody know. I'm just a partially. I'm not putting my toes in. I want to go all the way in. This signifies I'm done with my old life and I'm ready to live a new life. I'm all in. Family, come see me get baptized. Now this idea, you're supposed to be baptizing people. I said, Pastor, I, I don't know. Well, I thought it was you. <laughs> it does not, he's not speaking to pastors. He's speaking to disciples. All I'm saying, make it a goal that before you leave this earth, you at least baptize one person. That means that you were used to love someone and teach someone how to live for Christ, how to follow Christ. That, 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 that by the time your life on earth is done, you at least have one disciple. You know, you know how many pastors are not on the mission of God and they got this title of being a pastor and they don't reach one person for Jesus. They're just in charge of an organization and they just want to make sure let's keep this organizational tight and strong and let's keep the people happy because if they're not happy, they won't give. And if they don't give, I don't have a job. You're going to give an account for that pastor. I am not here. This is not my job. Come on, this is a call of God. And we're here to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And I know that this message is not a popular message, but we got to get back to responsibility. And I believe there's a group of people that are tired of playing church and they're saying, God, use me to transform someone else's life. Yeah. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The fullness of God. Teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. Check that out how it works. You teach them what I taught you. How many see the pattern? You teach them what I've taught you. Let's say, let's say it again. I teach them what I've been taught. I, I'm, I'm just asked, this is what we have to ask ourselves. Who are you teaching what you're learning. Now, if you and I do not schedule teaching others in our weekly schedule, we won't do it. And right now you might say, Pastor, I'm new. Understand, you're new. But you're not going to remain new for the rest of your life. What I mean by that is you're, you're being trained to teach others, not just get it, but you're being trained to get it and what? Give it. Get it and what? Don't be in counsel the rest of your life, 
Because the devil will use problems and emotional problems on you because it hinders you from your purpose. What I mean by that is I know you got an issue, but if you're 10 years with the same issue, it's no longer an issue. It's a distraction of the devil. And this is the reason we're not training people to teach others and make disciples. We're training people how to be followers, but we're not training people how to be leaders. We're training people how to be blessed, but we're not training people how to be blessors. I'll tell you, when you start getting on this blessed club, bless others club, that's a better club. You're going to start walking in power. Because this is what's going to happen. Once you get, look, look, this is a promise, look. Look at this. Let's get the promise. Man, oh man, we're just introducing this subject. Come on, are you guys getting this? Look at this. Teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. So what do we teach them? What we've learned. And we teach them what God has commanded. We, we need to stop using the Bible as a book of suggestions. Well, you know, God just doesn't say, look, I would recommend. I mean, you could take it or leave it that you do this. That's just my recommendation. Your counselor might talk like that, but Jesus don't talk like that. Jesus says, I command you, forgive them. I command you, repent of your fornication. I command you, love your enemies. We need to stop like giving the sissy Christianity to people that want a real, come on, they want some real. And, and as long as you're teaching the Bible as suggestions, people will never follow Jesus and get the full experience. I'm tired of hearing parents say, you know, I don't want to force my, 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 my beliefs on them. Let them choose what they want. And you think that's smart? You think it's smart to let them choose? You, I let my little grandson choose what he wants. He'd be dead on the freeway. He'd be, in a, we're in the car. I want out. I want out. I want, it's only going on the freeway. <laughs> I want to go outside. I want to go outside. No, there's cars out there. I want, I want to drink this. I want, that's poison. Can I play with that knife? <laughs> oh, I like the fire. Woo. Why would you protect your children from harm and not protect them from wrong thinking? I don't let my kids believe whatever they want to believe. I'm a father. I'm a pastor. I, come on. We have a responsibility. And my responsibility at home is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. I succeeded if they turn into followers of Jesus. Period. And I know this. For me to do that, I'm going to have to be radical. But understand this, you're discipling your children to be alcoholics, you're discipling your children to be abusers, you're discipling your children to be thieves and liars, you're discipling your children to be adulterers, or you're discipling your children to be godly, but you can't disciple both. To be a great disciple maker, me and you are going to have to sacrifice our wants and our desires and say, I sacrifice that to produce a result. I hope you come back next week. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, even if you brought a guest today, your guests don't want watered down versions of this thing. Tell me what it is and make me, let me make a real decision. And we love you. You're, you said, Pastor, you're pretty passionate. Of course I'm passionate because I really do believe this. How can I produce believers if I really don't have a deep conviction that what we're talking about is really truth? I love you. I want you to experience the full life that God offers for you, but you can't experience the full life if you only choose what commands you're going to obey. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ and keep your convenient life. 
to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, there must be a death, there must be a stretch, and there must be a sacrificial change. Death to your old life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, we're good. We're good. We're still there. But look what he says. Right now, we're just introducing what the mission is. What's the mission? Make disciples of Jesus Christ. What's the mission? And what does that mean? Followers of Jesus Christ. Students. And you can't have students without teachers. They say, Pastor, you're the teacher. I'm one of the teachers. You're the other teacher. I'll teach your children on Sunday. Susie will teach your children on Sunday, but you got to teach them six days a week after, or seven days a week after that. My teaching, all I was doing is, is supposed to support your teaching. My teaching is just supposed to be an amen to what you're already teaching in your home. It shouldn't be a shock that they're hearing this for the first time. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I don't even know what, I never heard of that. You never heard of it? What'd you hear in your house? A bunch of cussing, lying, and thieving, and drunkenness, and... Now, I'm not judging nobody. I'm just waking us up. Can you be producing uh, disciples of the devil and you're trying to produce disciples of Jesus Christ and the reason is you're following more of the devil than you follow Jesus? Getting quiet in this little Catholic church right now. <laughs> Look at this. I, looked at, I love this. Right? And he goes, he goes, Teach them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstances, on every occasion, even to the end of the age. What he's saying is, if you will accept my assignment to go and make disciples, and I'm here, say, so what, what, is, what is it making a disciple? Making followers of Jesus Christ. How do you make followers of Jesus Christ first? You got to become a disciple. Disciples of Jesus Christ make disciples of Jesus Christ. Followers of Jesus Christ make followers of Jesus Christ. Unless you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you can't produce something you ain't. If you want sold out children, you better get sold out. Come on, you cannot be a casual Christian, convenient Christian, and produce sold out kids. Whatever excuses that you're giving God and the same excuses your children will give you and they'll give God at the same time. So now he says, if you look at this assignment to go out there and make followers of me and you'll follow me and you'll set the assignment to make followers of Jesus Christ, this is what I promise you. I'll be with you. He goes, lo or yo. I'll be with you. Everywhere you go, anyone that's on my assignment, they have one thing guaranteed, backup. And if I'm with you, provisions with you. If I'm with you, breakthroughs with you. And if I'm with you, healing is with you. If I'm with you, power is with you. If I'm with you, come on. If I'm, if I'm with you, peace is with you. Joy is with you. Come on. If I'm with you, creative power is with you. If I'm with you, everything that you need to accomplish your assignment is with you. I just want you to know that this assignment, you're going to need me. But if you'll accept the assignment, I'll guarantee you this. I'll back you up. How many want to have a fire, powerful Christian? Come on. How many want to overflow life of some joy in your life, not drama? God doesn't want you just barely making it. He wants you to be walking in power. He, want, he don't want you drowning in the storm you're in. He wants you walking on water. He don't want you just surviving. He wants you to be more than a conqueror. He doesn't want you to press. He wants you to have some peace and joy. He doesn't want your marriage to be on the rocks. He wants your marriage to be an example. And I'm telling you, you are in a fight. Come on. You're in a fight right now. And I'm telling you, this fight is not easy because we're coming against a culture that's coming against our value system. And just because, come on, the culture is changing doesn't mean that God has changed his word. We got to stand. Uh, come on. We got to stand. Hold on to the value. 
you. And the word of God till the outside changes, but it has to change on the inside first. You got to hold down the fight, hold down the battle. And God promises you at the end, you'll see my victory because I'm with you. I just need someone to get a word, hold on to it and get on the mission and continue on the mission. Let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some worship. Come on, let him know that you're one that's sold out. Let's all stand up. Praise the Lord. Okay. I just got through half of my introduction. All right. Are you guys ready, ready to come back next week? We're going to talk. Get in a position for the mission. One of the keys to get in a position for the mission is to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. No one, check this out. I'll say, I'll say this next week, but I'll say it today. No one is an accidental follower of Jesus Christ. Like, I didn't even know I became a disciple. Somehow, I don't know. I don't know when it happened. See, it's not like getting COVID. You don't know when that happened. Being a disciple is a choice. Like, I don't know where I got it. I got it though. I don't know. You, you don't become a disciple because you were hanging around disciples. You become a disciple because you made a decision to follow Christ. And, and to follow Christ, you got to unfollow what you've been following. Following religion, following convenience. And you come the way you are. You come with your addiction. You come with your bad habits. You come with your anger. You come with your weaknesses. God doesn't say, fix your life, come to me. He says, just come to me and be willing to follow me. And I'll empower you to live a new life. I'll do such a drastic change in your life that people will see it and they'll undeniably know there must be a God. And some of you guys have lived a really reckless life and, and you're thinking, man, what could God do with this mess that I've created? And I'm so glad that you're finally taking personal responsibility, not to put a guilt trip on you, but just understand I created this mess. And it wasn't my fault. I was born in the family. I was born in with all the abuse and all the ungodliness that I saw. I know it wasn't your fault. But understand this. From here on out, you make a choice. Is that going to be your legacy or are you going to have a new life? Are you going to follow what your family's followed for generations? Or are you going to say, I'm done following that. I'm going to follow Jesus. Because if you follow Jesus today, you can have the life that you've always been looking for. No accidental disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to you and he says, come follow me. Unfollow what you've been following. You make a choice. You can leave here and say, nah, I want to continue following what? Following what are you following? What would stop you from following Christ? And whatever is stopping you and I from following Christ is a false God in your life that's going to lead you to hell and destruction. It's going to ruin your marriage, it's going to ruin your kids, it's going to ruin your mind, it's going to ruin your body. I am, I, I am tired of seeing the devil make disciples of destruction. I met a guy in the streets yesterday. I know he ain't looking himself in the mirror lately. Because if he did, he'd be in shock. I saw him on the streets. I'm not judging him. I'm just saying what I saw. He came out of, I don't even, he came out of some hole somewhere. His pants half down, dirty. I looked him in the eye. He's full of blood from top to bottom. His face full of blood, just dried up. I don't know how his night was. I don't know if he fell drunk and he hit his head. Full of blood, he doesn't know. And he's asking me for $2. And my heart breaks because I'm thinking another disciple of the devil under slavery hurting numb and not even aware of the condition he's in he can't even see it yet and I was just hoping that we could share a little love I pointed him to get some help and come to the church we're going to help you with everything that you need and I put him in the right direction I loved him but only Jesus can transform him but I do know this, God loves him so much that he sent me, us, down there on 9th and G in front of a liquor store to touch him. To 
Just touch them. Let them know God hasn't forgot about you. We're here. There's a church that loves you. And I don't know how far that's going to go, but I know it's a seed. And there's a chance. And I've seen a lot of people, minds gone. And they come to Jesus and they get restored. All I'm saying is no case that God can't fix. Come on, there's no marriage that God can't restore. There's nobody out there that, come on, stop putting limits on what God can do. Come on, God can reach your kids. They, they might be hard-headed, but God, how many know God's more hard-headed? He ain't gonna stop. You don't stop. He does need you to stand. Stand, okay, now. You're here. And this next 30 seconds, 60 seconds, can determine how your life goes from here on out. You could leave here a follower of what you've been following. Or you could be a follower of Jesus Christ. But I promise you, if you follow him, he'll give you purpose. If you follow him, he'll forgive you. If you follow him, your life could be restored. If you follow him, you can be free. But if you're in this room and you're saying, I feel like God's knocking on my heart's door and I'm tired of following what I've been following and I want purpose and I want to be able to pass on something worthwhile to my family. Start where you are now. Make a decision. No secrets. Join Christ. Follow Christ. Choose a new leader in your life. Pastor, I don't think I can stop the drinking. I don't think I can stop the, the addiction. I don't think I can stop the anger. I don't think I can stop. I just can't do that. I know you can't. I can't either. I need God's help. That's the miracle. I'm not telling you stop being depressed. I'm telling you come to Jesus and let him heal your broken heart. Come on, heal your emotions, make you new. Come the way you are. But I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to make a decision. And no one's going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. No one's going to go to heaven. No one's going to follow Jesus without accepting a call. You got to say yes. And today's the state of day to say yes. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. You might never get another opportunity. This is your moment. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. You're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I've been following Christ, but I want to follow Christ. I want you to raise your hand when I say three. One, if God's knocking at your heart's door, get ready to raise your hand. Two, Jesus died publicly for you. He raised his hands for you. Will you raise your hands for him? Come on, you come the way you are. Get ready to have an encounter with the creator of the universe that will change your life drastically. When I say three, I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to recommit my life to the Lord. Say three, raise your hands. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. Say that's me. Proud of you, young man. Proud of you, young man right there. Proud of you over there. Come on, anybody else way in the back. I see that hand. I say, come on, I'm proud of you guys right here. Proud of young lady right there. Right here, another one. Right over there. Come on, take a real man and woman. A real man right there. Come on, give your life to Jesus. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to take a bold step forward. I want you to come up here. Will you give me the honor and privilege to pray with you online? If right now, while you're in the, come on, you're in your living room, you're in your car, you're in the bed, raise your hand. It's the same thing. Put some action. Raise your hand right there. Jesus sees you. Those that raise their hands, come forward real quick. I want to pray with you right here. This is what you're saying. My whole life, I'm leaving no seats. I'm coming. Come on. I need a new life. I need a new beginning. Come on. Just give God some praise. Right now, new disciples of Jesus Christ. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Come on. Someone might not just need a little push. I'll go up there with you. Come on, church. Let's continue glorifying God online. Online, I'm proud of you. Stay right here. We're going to pray with you. In the prison right now. Come on. There's people in the prison here in this right now. Come on. Let's get it good. Let's thank God. Come on. Someone in the prison. Get it saved. Okay. Proud of you. Proud of you guys. Proud of every one of you. Guys, they're still coming. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, family's coming. Come on, there's someone coming right now in a wheelchair with their oxygen tank saying, come on, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm coming to Jesus. Come on. Love you guys. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this. What I'm offering you is for everybody but not everybody sees it for them it is though 
But I do know this. We love you. I want to see you experience the life that you've been created to live. And I know this. I'm not going to back up on the message. Because there's going to be a day. You might not be ready today because you still feel like you got it under control. But there's going to be a day you're out of control. And you're going to know where to come back to get your breakthrough. We ain't playing. We love you. It's heaven or hell. It's addiction or freedom. It's suicide or life. It's real. It's your time. And I'm going to ask you this. You're making a decision to be a disciple. We're going to pray for you. You're going to give your life to Jesus. But follow Jesus. We're going to have Holy Warriors class. You're never going to be a disciple of Jesus if you don't sign up for the next level. Say with me, there's another level. I just want to let you, I'm not pressuring nobody. This is what I'm saying. There's another level. And if you don't go to the next level, you make a choice to stay at the level you're at. Understand you're not going to go to, I'm not pressuring you. You don't have to do nothing. But if you want to get the full life, you're going to have to go through the full process. And if you don't want the full process, there's plan A, there's plan B, there's plan C. If you want to set, settle for C and just be saved and never have live powerfully and overcome and help somebody else overcome and live to the fullness of your life, it would be your choice. Go deeper. Sign up for Holy Warriors 1. That's going to be March 1st. Okay? Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, everybody with me. Repeat after me. Online too. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus save me set me free i believe that i've done life my way i'm tired of doing it my way give me a new life forgive me of my sins i believe that you died on the cross you rose from the dead to give me a new life i sinned and you paid the price you were punished for all the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven and receive right standing with you from today on I am a disciple a follower of Jesus Christ I will follow you until the day I die fill me now with your Holy Spirit, with your power, make me new. I'm saved, I'm born again, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Everyone that's here, your next step is get baptized, join Holy Warriors, love you guys. You need prayer, stay right here. If anyone needs prayer out there, you need a breakthrough. We got a team, love to pray with you. This is your moment, God bless you.